Hello and welcome everybody and welcome to round 11. Seattle. Headed to Seattle, Chuck. Yep. I like that. Hey, I hope everybody there is having a great day. Welcome to round 11 of RM Fantasy S Experts. I am Chase. And I'm Charles. And we are your hosts for this wonderful show. We got a really good show for you today. We got Derek Drake. Yep. Riding that bar, Suzuki calling in later on. Yep. So I uh, can't wait to talk to him. We got some good questions lined up for uh, for Drake. So, uh, yeah, for anybody that was in Indy, uh, shout out if I, I saw some people tag me. So thank you. Um, it's Man, it's crazier than I thought it would be when you're doing the race day live stuff and on the night program. I wish I had more time to go kind of converse with people, but it was good, man. It busy, was awesome. Busy. Very busy, but holy crap, we're round 11. We got seven more of these things to go. Charles, is the title, is it done? It's done. Is it done? It's sealed up, but each race is going to be fun. Could be unique. Could have some different winners still. Well, it's a good thing you got fantasy, because what if you didn't have fantasy? Then you'd just be like, well, Jet's going to probably win the title, and I'm not going to win a dang thing. So yep. that's why fantasy, fantasy is so good. Win prize. How many points did you get? I got 40. You, you, I think you got me by five, right? Mm -hmm. Gosh Got dang you it. by five. I've been I've been <laughs> so chipping much for away. Chipping. I know, dude. I'd been chipping away and now I'm out. So I'm gonna have to start with seven to go. I think I'm like forty down from you. I'm gonna have to start taking a few risks here and there to try and gain some points on you. Because if we're both just putting Better Jet to big. win, what what good is it gonna do if Jet doesn't win, right? I gotta take some risks somewhere. But uh <laughs> I'm gonna stretch the gap. We gotta, yeah, we got a poll right now for your favorite gummy candies because we were actually debating this earlier, like what's the best gummy candy? Um, okay. That being said, uh, let's get right into it here. Hey, uh, ticket giveaway for Foxborough. We got 20 tickets to give away. Remember though, that we don't give those away in this live show. We say this every week. You have to comment after this video is posted to YouTube, not on the live comment. If you're going to be, or if you can be at Foxborough, how many tickets you would need does not include travel. And then Rachel will go through and select some lucky winners. It's awesome. Go. Okay. Good deal. Uh, let's check out the weekly prizes. Yeah, this is what we got up for Reason grabs this week. Reason why we're doing this. Ooh, Chuck, which one First, would you take? Man, to be honest, probably second. I'm uh, all about those Magura hydraulic clutches. You like the and I got, I got that old CR, so I need one. Oh, that's you right. You know what I mean? Speaking but of, if, didn't you find a crack on your old frame there, Charles? Yeah, I don't want to no talk about no it. No regrets? Don't dude. tell everyone. Fine, everybody knows. Charles is crack. full meme, no regrets right now. More importantly, first place, Alpine Stars coming in with the Tech 7. Second, the Magura Hydraulic Clutch. Third place, the set of tires. Fourth place, some gear from Fly. Fifth place, Matrix Concepts. Sixth, ASV, the clutch and brake lever. Seventh place, Motul Slacker. Eighth place, RM Gear Bag with the air fresheners. Always nice. Yeah. Ninth place, Works Connection coming in with the whole shot device and our meter. Tenth place, the Cherubies spending spree. All right. Well, there you have it. And as always, you know, with the grand prizes, we got those three dirt bikes that are up for grabs. And you guys can see the grand prizes and the weekly prize at any time on the armfantasysx.com website. So be sure you go in there to check it out. Right there, you can see a screen grab. Those are the grand prizes for the end of the year. And we also did want to give a shout out. Christian put this in here. Uh, Landon Beecher. 
Looks like you won an O'Neill helmet from last week's weekly prizes. I uh, had a friend who recently uh, had a bad crash in Washougal, and they're getting the helmet signed by some pro riders in Seattle to give to Landon in the hospital. So got to give a shout nice. out to him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there it is. Let's jump into it. KTM leaderboards. What do we got as results? Ebo 10. 553 points. What's, How's the, that feel? what's the spread first to 10th right now? 528, 553. So just under 30 points. 35 not points. Bad. Yeah, not, not 25 so points. That's not very one. much no. for your top 10. Two points between the top two. Fantasy top, S experts. Yep, top in ours, 501. Yeah, okay. Severe Scott, nice work. And then top scorers, looks like we had a whole bunch of people with 127. So not bad. Moto Life, 112. Sweet. Awesome. I like it. Kicking our butts. Yeah, I know, dude. One of these days we'll know what that's like. But, uh, yeah, it's been good. I mean, we'll get into it with the racing as far as what you noticed. But real quick, let's get into our Bridgestone race recap here. What do we got going on? Shout out Dr. JB, who always gives the lap charts. Remember, the link to the Discord uh, is down below in the description. Go to the Discord because that's where Dr. JB does his best work. He's uploading yep. all the charts. We do stats there. You guys all bench race on the race day, so it's awesome. But, uh, yeah, so we'll show you the good lap times. chart here in just a minute. There you can see is the link to the Discord. But we just have the lap chart from race one, and it looked a lot of the same between Jet and Kenny. I mean, honestly, outside of Charles, of, of Jet and Kenny, is there anything else that you notice while watching? Uh, mostly just Sexton in race three. Yeah, looked really good. Yeah, that was really impressive. Was that the best Sexton we've seen so far this year? I think so. I mean, <sighs> Jet's just so freaking good because if you watch that third race, Jet was behind Kenny. Didn't have to beat him to win. Chase kind of got close. And then Jet was like, okay. Yep. The f- that's I'll, the funny thing. I'll just get around Kenny. And he did. And then Chase got around Kenny too. But it's too little too late. You know what I mean? Too little too late. So it's like Jet was almost just kind of playing it like, I'll stay right here. I won't push the, 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 the pace if I have to. Yeah. And as soon as Chase creeped up, Jet was like, oh, all right, I'll go. Welcome to the danger zone, yeah. It's kind of wild seeing something like that. I kind of wondered if that's what Jet was doing. And then... I was like, yep. I wonder, I wonder if Chase in those situations, he sees, like, he, he thinks, like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm catching up to Jet, or, like, I'm catching Jet, I'm catching him, <laughs> and then Jet just like, mm, no, you're not, and Never just kind of puts a few seconds on him. It's like, how, Ch- Sexton still hasn't passed Jet Lawrence yep. in a race. Nope. I, Nine games. He started in front ever of him, since but he's ever- never passed him. Yeah, ever since outdoors, very first race last year, and it's like, just been like that. <laughs> we we had talked about it, and we're right back here where Jet now look. Coop is the second closest, and he is twenty one back. Sexton's twenty five. Yep. I'm in my opinion, Jet is already to the stage where he can just be in management zone. Yeah, like he's got a full race on Chase and Eli. Coop's back. But Coop clearly has not shown, nobody's shown they have the raw speed. So from here on out, Jet doesn't even have to, like, stress about, you know. So, go yeah, ahead. I agree. But for a second, I was like, man, Kenny is, like, giving Jet a run for his money. And then race three, I was like, all right, fine. Like, it's just, no, it's got to it's like it's be a mental game with these other guys. Like, man, what is going on? He can just pass me at will. Yeah, I don't know, but I feel like when Roxton in 2017, when Roxton took the world by storm when he joined Honda, that's kind of what Roxton was doing to the rest of the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't think it's anything new. It's just Jets just kind of elevated that game just a little bit. Um, yep. We do have some interesting questions for Drake when he comes in, too, talking about sex and outdoors, talking a little bit about does he regret it. Are we ready? Speaking of... Let's get this caller, guest caller here. This is our ASV guest caller. His name is Mr. Derek Drake. And we got him on the phone right now. Going to pop up here in just a second. Yep. Winning the RM. uh, Yeah, he won the privateer payout. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get him up here in just a sec. Um, But yeah, so we got some cool questions for him. If you have questions for Derek while we're talking to him, uh, put those in the chat. We'll try and get to a few of them, but uh, it's going to be good. Anyway, yep. go, going back to Jet. Sorry, I jumped the gun. We almost have Drake on. <laughs> uh, going back to Jet. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. But management mode, if, if he sees Webb, like, 
for example, if he starts in fifth and Webb is out front and he gets to second place, but Webb's got a four second gap, Jet's not going to be like, oh, shoot, like I've got to try and bridge the gap and catch him, right? So right. I don't know. Man, but let's ask this man, Mr. Mr. Derek Drake. How are we doing, Derek? Good. How are you? Oh, we're just sitting here bench racing, talking about how uh, Mr. Jet Lawrence can now go into basically management mode if he really, if he needed to. I don't think he will, but he doesn't have to win. He does, you know, he's got 21 points on Webb, 25 on Sexton. I don't know if you've ever been in that position, but it's kind of like now it's, it's even tougher for these guys to win the title because we, we had talked always about how you got to put Jet in this uncomfortable position to make him maybe make a mistake. But now with him having this points gap, even if Jet starts in fifth or sixth, it's not going to make him too worried about it because he knows he's got such a cushion on him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, yeah, this guy's definitely not new to winning championships or anything. So he's got a pretty good idea of what's going on. He's got a good team around him. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll take something major to uh, upset this thing. What is it? He's going for six championships in a row, I think. He won like yeah, three in a row on yeah, two. Yeah, I don't think he's lost a title since his rookie rookie season. So, um, yeah, pretty much every year he's entered, he's uh, won. <laughs> That's insane. Good grief. Speaking of winners, dude, you got picked for the LCQ privateer payout, and then you won the extra cash, dude. Congratulations. We're stoked when we pick a rider, then make it to the main, and we get to cut you a check. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, guys. That was uh, definitely um, an unexpected surprise, but, uh, yeah, awesome. Did yeah, you, was, did, yeah, did you know you were picked before the gate dropped? And no, did I didn't. I yeah, I had no idea. So <laughs> they showed up on the big screen on the jumbotron, or yeah. I, I keep saying jumbotron. That is a trademark term. I need mm. to say the SMX big screen. The large. I, I did a live announcing <laughs> on the show, and so I can't say that anymore. But anyway, yeah, they showed on the big screen right before the gate drop. But these guys are so locked in, I don't think yeah. half of them even realize what's going on. Yeah, no, but, definitely not. It's definitely a stressful situation. I mean, the LCQ too. So. Yeah, I was not looking around, but yeah, I was delighted to a wonderful surprise after. Right on. Hey, man, so here's a question I have for you. What's easier to set up from just stock? Supercross setup and suspension or outdoors? Uh, from stock, I would say outdoors just because that's what, you know, the bikes are based off of when they come out of the crate. So, um, yeah, I would go with outdoors. So you think outdoors is easier or harder to set up? I would say easier to set up. Okay. Why, why is, what's the biggest, uh, like if you're setting up for supercross, what, what makes it more difficult? What is it about the bike setup that makes it so much more challenging than just for an outdoor setup? Um, an outdoor setup pretty much if you're, you know, just a normal guy riding, um, you're just going to want the thing plush and, and work for you. But, uh, for supercross, there's so much different things you could do with because tracks are always changing with the whoops and you know the rhythms and, and all that stuff. Um, to, so to find the perfect setup that works from track to track, I would say is more difficult on Supercross than to find a setup that works track to track for uh, outdoors. Yeah. So well, okay. And with that, like a lot of guys, they set or at least they used to set them up specifically for the whoops, right? Or is that not um, quite accurate? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think so. The whoop, I mean, the whoops now, they're pretty, I mean, since they've gone to like that nine whoop uh, rule or whatever, I guess, uh -huh. um, the whoops haven't really been a big deal this year compared to uh, the years of like 21, 22, and even even last year of 23. Those whoops, those three years, the whoops were really, really insane. So, um, well, and yeah, the it's whoops, been kind of a nice change this year. The whoops break down so much that, let, let's mm -hmm. face it, they become jumpers outside yeah. of a few races. Most of them become jumpers by the end of the night. So does that allow you guys to run a little bit more of a comfort setup on a supercross track, knowing that, like, hey, these whoops are just getting chewed up and beat down. You don't have to have that insanely stiff setup to try and just stay on top and blitz through them. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right on that. I mean, the only skim whoops I think we've had this year for all night has been like Glendale or you know some harder pack because even the anaheims we were jumping them mm -hmm. um so yeah we've been jumping the whoops a lot this year more than more than normal but um yeah it's a change and um you definitely want you know that top initial hit to be pl on the plusher side uh right. the main event so rough and and chewed up anyways so taking whoops let's let's take whoops out of a super cross track mm -hmm. what is the most important area uh, of a super cross track where you're trying to dial in the suspension to, because you've got chop and chatter, which guys are always wanting a soft feel, 
But I get when you're running such stiff setup, it's hard to get that. But is it more about allowing the bike to turn or is it like the G outs going through rhythm lanes? So the bike's absorbing that, but it's still driving forward. Like what's the most crucial part you guys are like, I'm curious. Yeah. Um, I would say for, for me, I like, uh, when I feel good on the bike is when, um, this it's perfectly set up for like the G outs and driving forward. Like you said, um, there's a lot of times where like, like the rhythms have ruts and kickers on them. So I'll, sometimes I'll just like have a wheel be like front wheel high and I don't, and so I have to get over the front more. Um, but when they can go through it super smoothly and you can kind of scrub and, and make time off the rhythms, um, it's, it's really nice. So yeah, I would say I like, I like um, having my bike set up for in between the rhythms, the G outs. Okay. Another question from an outsider's perspective, looking in when riders like say chase sex in this year, um, he's saying, I still haven't found that feeling that I'm looking for. And this is going to lead into Charles's next question. What do you, do you have any idea what he's referring to? Like, is it when he's coming into corner super fast? Do you think like the bike doesn't feel stable? Like where, cause he says, I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what that feeling is. Do you have any idea what he might be relating to there? Yeah, no, I, I don't. I mean, it could be a hundred, I mean, tons of whatever things he's talking about it could be suspension engine i mean who knows what he's talking about but um but it, i do know when you do have the feeling um everything becomes a lot easier and you can go a lot faster so um i'll be on the lookout for when he does find that feeling well yeah with that just in one of his interviews he mentioned like the adjustment from an aluminum frame to a steel frame mm -hmm. and it sounded like Maybe he didn't quite know what he was getting into all the way. And Ricky Carmichael had mentioned also that, uh, or alluded to, maybe he didn't do enough research on the bike before he signed with KTM. He signed pretty early on um, when he was still with Honda. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, when you go test a bike for that you want to mm -hmm. ride for a season, how, qu how quick or how long does it take to really know if that bike is going to, work for you or suit you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about, it's like yeah. if he's on Honda, right. And he signs so early and I'm, I want to yeah. piggyback that off that is like when you're in a contract with a team and Sexton's like looking at Red Bull, does uh -huh. he even have enough time to go ride a KTM to even know if that bike's going to be good for him or not? Like, cause I would imagine you have to be so secretive that there's mm -hmm. no way you're going to be able to just go do like test days and to be like, yep, I can win on that bike. I think it's more just mm -hmm. like, sign and, and pray i don't know yeah no um i would imagine he was he had his mind set up for where he was going so and he like you said he signed pretty early so i would imagine he rode the bike a day or two um before signing or maybe signed a, a you know a, a letter of agreement or, or whatever um but yeah i would imagine he rode it and he tested a little bit but you know it's honey like, you know, like they say it's honeymoon phase so everything you're gonna ride you're gonna love and yeah. Um, you really don't get really get to know the ins and out until, you know, you're about round 10 or 11 with the new bike. Like he is when so, he, when he rode that bike, but why are you still on Honda? And I think now he has said that he rode it a couple times. Yeah. Do you think that was like KTM met with him somewhere in secret and they had like a setting for him? Or do you think it was just like he hopped on the stock bike and rode some outdoors and said, okay. Yeah, no, I, he would, he would have rode the full factory bike. They got it set up for him. Um, I don't know whether that would be out in California or they shipped it to Florida or, or whatever they did. But, uh, yeah, I would imagine he rode the full, full race bike. How does, how do you, if you're on Honda and you're a signed factory rider, like I, I would just be curious to know like what Honda's reaction would be if they'd found out like, dude, Chase just rode a KTM yesterday with factory KTM. Mm -hmm. Like that's gotta be so scary if you're Sexton, cause you are breaking every rule <laughs> known to man. If you are uh, a factory Honda rider yeah. and you're going to take the risk to go ride the competition's bike in the middle of a contract. That's yeah. I, I, yeah, that is, it is risky for sure. But, um, I think Chase and Honda, they, it's not like they were on bad terms and Honda does the same thing with the other guys. They let other guys out of, you know, ride their factory on the bike when they're going to sign someone. So I think it's a, it's a known thing between every factory team and it's kind of a, it's like a know, mutual respect. Yeah. It's, like, it's kind of like, yeah, we get it, you know? So, yep. I mean, it's by no means is he out, you know, posting about it or, or anything yeah. like that. So, no one's seen it. I mean, who, who like, we don't know for sure if he rode the bike, but I, you know, it's basically telling that he did, but right. Uh, well, you know how it is. 
Huh. Yeah, and like part of that, I kind of wonder if like who's on your team, if that plays a big part of what team you sign with. Like maybe he was threatened by Tomac and didn't want to go to a Yamaha. I heard, I heard he rode the Yamaha. Or if it's just who's going to be working with you specifically in that. I, paycheck. Paycheck. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, it's a var- it's a variable of things. I mean, who knows what the fine print is or, or whatever how the contracts are structured and all that. But um, it seemed like yeah, I, if you did go to start, it would be a pretty stacked uh, four fifty team this year between Webb, Tomac, and and Sexton. So that probably shied him away a little bit. But yeah. you know, it seems like he he'll be he'll be good for with the KTM. I don't think he made a bad move or anything, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay, so speaking of. Uh, Okay, so right now with Sexton, he's on that bike. Uh, he's, I would imagine at this point, his gears are shifting a little bit towards outdoors, right? But yeah, yeah. at the same time, they're still trying so hard to figure out this bike for Supercross. I'm like, where are you going to find the time to test for Supercross? Because they need to leave this year having a setting that they're going to race on in 25. Or like, they need mm-hmm. to, like, Sexton's going to have to leave this Supercross season saying, it took me all season, but I found a setting that was amazing. So he can go into that. I would imagine the off season knowing like, okay, we did the work. We found that, but that's going to be hard to juggle. I bet when you're trying to get ready for outdoors too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree. Um, I mean, I would imagine they would find something within these last um, six races for sure. Um, but yeah, it definitely has a peace of mind if he found, if he, you know, wins the last two or, or, or whatever peace of mind going into 25. And, um, but they also have so much data and stuff on that bike already because they, they raced that bike before. I think it's the second or maybe even third season on the new, that new KTM. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they know what they're doing over there. They're all professionals and he'll be fine. All right. Well, Hey, I want to know more about you. I want to switch gears here. Mm-hmm. So, I want to know what you think about the change with the whoops. I want to know how, what you think about the season so far and kind of what your goals are and how you're feeling. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I actually like the whoops, so I'm a fan of the, the, uh, the bigger whoops and longer whoops. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's just like in my passing spot, I felt like, so now they all kind of funnel down to the jumpers and, you know, one line, I can still pass a little bit, but, um, I was a fan of the normal, normal size whoops that didn't break down or, or anything like that. But, um, the season has been going, it's been going okay. A little bit of a hiatus the last couple of weeks. Um, I actually originally tweaked my back at a two and, um, just been what? kind of dealing with that. What happened and there? I don't know. I just, I didn't crash or anything. Just after the main event, I was really sore with my lower back. And then, you know, I, you know, got some chiropractor therapy on it and got it feeling better. And then it really like came back on strong where I couldn't ride during the week or anything. So I missed those two weeks. And then, um, yeah, this last weekend in, uh, Indy, it really started to bother me again. So I'm still dealing with this lingering back issue really, uh, you know, inhibiting my ability right now. So hopefully they'll get that fixed soon. I, I wonder, so talking about like the whoop change, right. Um, mm-hmm. and I want to, this will lead to my last question for you. Mm-hmm. Does, Feld and the AMA, well, I doubt the AMA has anything to do with it. Does Feld present to the riders and say, hey, we want to go from just having a max limit of nine whoops and here is why and present some sort of data? So even if the riders that necessarily are like, I don't like that, I like big long whoop sections, can at Mm -hmm. least be like, okay, I don't really like that, but I understand why you're doing it. If, if they were to say, hey, 80% of the crashes happened in whoop sections that were more than 10 whoops, so we're going to back it down to try and reduce the number of guys crashing? Or do they just make these changes and you guys find out about it the next race? Yeah, no. I mean, if there was an email or, or anything, I missed it because I had no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, no idea. Even like we're third round in, I still had no idea until I think it was on Pulp or something. They said, oh, yeah, new rule change. That was the first time I heard of it. Oh. So, um, yeah, we'll see what they do. Is there anything about the sport, tracks, bikes, anything like that that you would change if you, if you had full control? Uh, I have to think about that a little longer. Um, I think we sleep on that tonight. But, uh, no, um, everything's going going well right now. And, uh, yeah, just trucking along. Okay. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Uh, go Thank ahead. You. No, 
No, I hope your back gets feeling better, and uh, we wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, how do, how so, do you like the Suzuki, by the way? We got we got uh, time for yeah. one more quick question. How do you like it? Kenny's killing on that thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Suzuki 450, uh, I like it. It's more of a um, – I mean, I, I think I, I like the 450 class better, especially um, it's more of a level playing field when it comes to bikes. You know, if you're on 250s, it's got to be – to be competitive, I think you either got to be on you know, those top uh, factory teams because the – the difference is so much between, you know, the, the top bikes and, you know, the other ones. So for the 450 class, more of a level playing field, we all got horsepower. It's uh, it's more just about uh, bike setup and, and settings and, and starts. So on a 250, you talked about horsepower. Is that most prevalent in the start? Because, you know, in the rhythm lanes, your first, second gear, maybe in the mm-hmm. whoop sections, but is it really mm-hmm. when they talk about horsepower, because all these bikes can do all the rhythms. Yeah. Is it more like the advantage is going to be mostly in the start if you're on a 250 and you're on this the best engine? Um, not really. I mean, I think it's just all around. It's rhythms, corners, whoops. I mean, it's just it's just all around. You get so much, you know, hundreds of a second, tenths of a second here right. and there that add up over a lap. It's just uh, it's you taking, know, all around taking an inside rut versus a third mm-hmm. rut out and still getting able yeah. to double or triple out of a corner, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, are you racing in Seattle this weekend? Yeah. Yep. Looks like it might be some rain. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's been a lot of mud races this year, so uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay, all right, Nick. Do we got time for one more question? Okay, I, I, last question. I've, I've said this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go until we're all out. Uh, this is your fifth last. Yeah. This is my fifth last. That's all right, dude. Okay, they've talked about deepest field ever, right? That's been the whole thing, like hashtag deep field all year long. Yeah, I disagree. Not that it's not mm-hmm. a deep field, but mm-hmm. here's the deal. Every year we always say, oh, anybody could win. But mm-hmm. no, no matter what, you only ever get five to six winners. Yeah. So to me, it's like, I don't know if it means, I don't know if that's because it's a deep field, more just mm-hmm. because that's just how it is. Like that's just history shows. I can't even remember the last time we had more than six winners. It rarely ever happens. And, I, and mm-hmm. usually like the sixth winner is like some fluke race at the end of the year. When, Mm -hmm. you know, some guys are out or the guy that's already wrapped up the titles, not pushing as hard. But uh, do do you think there's any weight behind that, that this is the deepest field? Or you think it doesn't matter every year? You're just always going to have those top dudes that just are that much better than everyone else. Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's a little bit of both. You're for sure going to have the top three guys that are a little bit better than anyone else when the season, you know, sets in. But, um, I mean, yeah, looking at A1, you know, 2024, even 2023, um, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of past champions and, and race winners in the, in the main event. So, um, yeah, you just have to look at stats to really, to really make your opinion. But, um, yeah, no matter what, it's a deep, no matter what, if you're going to line up on a 450 class in the main event, it's, it's going to be stacked. That's always going to be that. Well, what's more surprising, yeah. that Tomac might not win a race this year mm-hmm. or that Anderson – might not win a race since 2022. They both won seven that year. Anderson has not won yeah. since, not looking good. And Tomac is just, we don't know. Yeah. Um, I would say Tomac, the uh, Tomac one's more surprising uh, to me. Just, you know, since how long has he gone not winning a race in, you know, in a season, I don't think ever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's going to pull one out, especially when we get to Salt Lake City or, or Denver or, or something like that. So um, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if he, if he pulls one out. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, Mr. Derek Drake, uh, we don't want to take a lot of your time. We appreciate you taking time out of your night to do this for us. We know you're probably hopping on a plane. Are you riding press tomorrow? Uh, sorry, no. Friday? no Friday. Friday. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't think the hot press anyway since it's going to be raining. Yeah, we'll but, see. Uh, yeah, no press for me. Just going gonna, gonna to show up Saturday morning. All right, man. Well, hey, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, Good luck with everything you got going on, and good luck this weekend in Seattle. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, man. We'll talk soon. See ya. Thank you. See ya. What a good guy. I just have one thing to say. I can't (laughs) not say it. What's up? The only thing I think about the deep field is, like, you have to get the start. I think it's harder and harder to actually work your way through the field this year. Okay. So, just a thought. Fair enough. We yep. still haven't had a winner start worse than third after lap one. Mm-hmm. And we're 10 rounds into this thing. Exactly. But we haven't seen Jet start. Uh, 
No, we did. He st- where did he start in Glendale? He was like seventh or eighth. Worked up to third. Uh, Jet. Yeah, I'll have to look. Maybe, well, I yeah, I don't know. Somewhere but, like so that, may, yeah. Maybe it is the deepest field. I don't know. I just know it's, it's just crazy how we say there's ten dudes that could win, and then every year this if is they what we start. get. We get five or six. No, it, even well, if, actually, I'm lying to you because, well, not lying, but AP, he was up there on the third race last mm-hmm. weekend, Dude, and then yeah. I guess he only faded back one spot though. But but here's my here's my thought though. If Justin Barsha, Jason Anderson, um, who else am I thinking? Oh, Malcolm Stewart, uh-huh. Adam Cianciarulo, any of those top factory guys, if any one of them, say a healthy Dylan Ferrandez, mm-hmm. any of those guys whole shot in Seattle, they're not going to win the race. I'd put my money on Jet, Kenny, Sexton, chasing them down and, and winning. So that's what I mean. It's like... Cream they, rises we say to anyone the top. could win, but that's okay. not the case. Like, if it's those true. guys whole shot it, I'm not going to just be like, oh, Anderson's going to win this race. No, there's only four or five dudes right now that could win a race. Yeah, so it's going to be those top few guys if they get a good – whichever one of those. Whichever one start. of those guys. Because I think it's the top few dudes, it's really hard for them to pass. Uh-huh. Maybe not so much Jet, but like you said, if he started in eighth and only worked up to fourth or whatever sure. – you know? but, I, but I'm just saying, even if Anderson or Malcolm or one of these guys that hasn't won yet, Tomac even, uh-huh. ripped a whole shot, it's not like, oh, they're going to win the race because they got the whole shot this weekend. There's only those top dudes right now that e- are going to win even if they get the, the start, right? So yep. just kind of where I'm at. Yep, I'll agree. All right, uh, let's get into it. Fox top contenders. Oh, I guess we didn't talk about the results yet, but you had uh, Jet, Roxon, Sexton. Sexton, we, we talked about it. The best we've seen him this year. Yep. Right? Anderson. <clears throat> and then uh, Coop. Mm-hmm. And then Justin Barsh for the wild card. Oh, yeah. I I don't know about what's going on with Anderson, man, but he is just... Oh, excuse me. I got he the hiccups. He some milk. He Up does. Need, yeah, I need some milk. No, I don't know, man. I just... <laughs> I don't know. I. It is what else Five, things. six, five for a fourth. How'd that happen? I don't know. He looks <laughs> tired. He just looks like he's... Just he, him and Tomac, to me, give me the same vibe when I see him out there sometimes where it's like, I can't tell if you're getting arm pump. I can't tell if you're just tired, but just your body language, your aggression, like everything makes me think that like something's wrong. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jet Lawrence, look, the only talking point we need to have on this guy right now is 99.9% of people are going to put him in first. Yeah. Just because, um, like he's got six whole shots and five wins. Uh, Arlington, he should have won, had a goofy crash. And then we had two mud races. Mm-hmm. So Jets won half the races. I mean, realistically, he's probably should have won eight of them. I mean, if San Francisco and San Diego aren't full mudders, it probably changes things. I don't know. But it's, it's, it, it's, it's a sneaky dominating, like five out of ten is dominating, I, I would say. Yeah. But five five race wins is like, on the lower end of what I think he would have, you take out the mud races and that goofy crash in Arlington, right? Yep. And, there, you know, you can't put an asterisk in there like what it could have should in Arlington, but it's still gnarly. Well, I'll take him out of first when someone else wins back-to-back. Okay. That's put Cooper right Webb now. up there for us. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cooper Webb, let's see. Uh, still the only rider with multiple wins. Uh, yep. His starts. Every, it seems like everybody except for Jet and Kenny... Just we're not can start consistent with starts last week. Yep. How about Kate Clayson, dude? Did you hear about him getting death threats and stuff? Well, you told uh, me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Bad news there. But, yeah, he was looking real good. And then, obviously, first race, little tangle up. And then uh, didn't quite rebound how I thought he would from there. But, yeah. who knows? I don't, I don't think he got hurt from the crash. But No, he didn't. And just, even, if, even if he doesn't hit Kate Clayson uh, in that whoop section, he's still going to – finished third at best or fourth like he was behind Sexton at that point so I don't I think he was but was he not in second I don't think he was okay I'd, I'd have to see I don't think he was in second I think he was like because Kenny whole shot the first two that's right and so I don't think he was in set or did, was the first two I don't know Kenny was up there so no I he don't. was up there finished eighth and then he went fourth and fifth so I mean regardless I think he's going to be a solid top five guy this well, season. yeah, but obviously anyway, but he, he's 21 back. So barring jet DNFs or crashes, it's like, look, you know, like, yeah, 
Chase Sexton. Let's get into it. I, I would put Cooper coming back to just a normal race. I'd put Coop on your podium somewhere. Yep. Jet Lawrence, or sorry, I grabbed the wrong plate. Chase, Chase Sexton. Sexton. Duh. Like I said, though, I, I have I have Sexton to win this weekend. It could happen. I'm not saying. Sound drop. It, so even in his interview, he's like, yeah, I feel like we're getting the mental aspect and the bike where it needs to be. Like, what was the mental aspect? Do you think it was uh, like he me- mentally felt defeated coming in the races because he knew he didn't like his bike? I think so. Think? Something along those lines. I don't know. Hey, that's a big part of it. Hey, that poll though. Are you about? Are you all about the nine whoops? Save the riders? Or are you like all about put more in? I'm torn. I'm leaning more towards be all in, put more in. I am. That, I feel like that's what makes Supercross Supercross. They become jumpers anyway, and it's a separator. The guys that are better in whoops excel in the whoop sections, yeah. and then they and most of them become jumpers anyway. Yeah, it's it's one more place for people to make passes. Yeah. Um, the only place I would say don't put maybe like. 13 whoops. No, do it. Put 13 whoops in Glendale. Like, I want to see dudes blitz across 13 whoops. So, I don't know. Yeah. Whoops, <laughs> I want to whoops see and it. sand are my two favorite things. But they're also the two things that have a lot of carnage. So Yeah, but sand section carnage ain't bad. You're not it's seeing not. dudes, like, getting carted off the track out of a sand section. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, Chase Sexton. Play the replay of Watson last year. Which one? Yeah. Nick's asking about Rock. Where at? In the whoops? No, in the sand section. Who was that last year? Did somebody get hurt in the sand section? <sighs> I don't know. Did somebody we'll, get hurt we'll in the sand section last year? I'll have to do my research here. Yeah. This okay. is the biggest loser of the night. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Yeah, so Sexton, like, look, I, I think he is a solid. This is the best he looked. Um, he's, look, 3-4-3 three, three are his last finishes. Put him on your box. He looked good. He looked fast. He qualified second. Yep. And everything about that last show me like he, I'm kind of starting to feel like Sexton now is the second best guy over Coop. Looking good, feeling good. Yeah. So I would actually honestly move Sexton over Cooper this weekend. And that's, that's why I have him for the win. I think Sexton will be the next guy to win over Jet. I disagree there, but we'll talk in a minute. Who do you, who do you think is going to win first? Roxon. I mean, I mean, really, I, he's I been the only that, guy right? to he's, really he's the only other give guy. Jet a run for his money. Okay. But obviously, Jet got him back. Okay. Fair so, enough. But we're not talking about him yet. We're talking about Eli Tomac, 36 points well, back. Well, let's, let's talk about Kenny. He's actually next in points. He's, okay. Dude, Ken Roxon is now one point ahead of Eli Tomac. WTF. Yeah. I mean, hey, so, props to Kenny, though. Yeah. His starts were amazing last week. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Yep. Okay. 1-1-1. One, one, and the crazy part to me is Kenny was doing this line into the whoops, and Jet stole it from him and used it to beat him, gain time on I know. Him. Like, <laughs> but I think Kenny stopped doing that because it was sketchy. Yeah. Dude, I went over so that, and, like, looked at that section. Uh-huh. There's no way. They're jump Like, Jet's jumping, and he's not only landing in the whoops, but he's landing in ruts. And his landing zone was, like, less than a foot over from the tough block on the side of the track, like zero margin for error. And if he, if he lands just slightly off centered or in the wrong rut, or if he lands cross rutted, he's off the track. Like it's stupid. Like I know why Kenny wasn't doing it because it was sketchy. Well, good on Kenny for not doing it because when he was out front in the races at the beginning of the season, Uh uh-huh. He made dumb little mistakes that screwed the whole thing up. So Kenny did. uh Uh-huh. So it's like, even if you're going to take second, it's better to play the long game, play it smart. So yeah, good on him. But they still want to win. If he's got a, if he wants to win, though, he would have to hang yeah, it out. Yeah, I agree. Take the risk. Striving and thriving. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> this week though, it is another long start. Yeah. So Kenny just cleaned house on all three of those. Yep. Jet. Well, here's the thing too. Uh, if you look at Jet starts, like he on the first start, Jet was at best going to be fifth. Six, seventh, coming around that first turn. His racing IQ of where he can see on the track is unreal. Because he comes into this, he's not, he's getting pinched, and he checks up at the perfect moment and just slides underneath everybody. Yeah. He did that two out of the three drops. Yeah. Where it was like, oh, Jet's going to be buried a little bit here. 
And then nope. all of a sudden, the slingshot. out. And then all of a sudden, out. like, yeah, because from my vantage point on the track, I see him go down the start. But then as they're rounding the first turn, I can't really see them. All I see is when they start jumping back toward me. But I could see, like, as they're going to the start, because I'm watching Jet, and I'm like, oh, Jet got pinched. And then, dude, they come into that first rhythm lane, and then Jenny pops in, or Jenny, Kenny pops in the air, and then Jet pops up, like, one or two spots back. You're like, what the hell just happened? Like, yep. Jet was not that close on the start. Yep. Tomac kind of and, What's that? Uh, I was just saying it was kind of insane because it was so close. Like, I totally thought Roxon had the whole shot, all three, but no, like, uh, Jet got the whole shot on two of them. So, yeah. But Kenny, I mean, yeah, Jet got the whole shot. Kenny led the first lap of all three of them. But, uh -huh. but then Tomac on one of them, I'm trying to remember which one. I want to say it was the third. Tomac had a bike on everybody, but because he just went a little bit wide and went all the way outside, he went from first guy entering that turn to like seventh going down the first rhythm lane races over at that point. So that, that's how crazy our fast it changes, right? You think the guy's going to get the whole shot and then he's seventh going through the first rhythm lane. Crowd of the year races over. The of Anaheim. And if you're told you know race this, one, right? Ken Ooh, so which one we play early, here? And he has Run it back. Run it back. Shot. Man, he was riding so incredible Jets, all what? night he's, long. And this really is the first the pressure one. On crowd of the year so the look at Jet right there. Here is race one. Ken Robson, he just, so good early. Everyone, and all those guys, Webb, everyone had the bike Man, on him going to that first turn. He just snuck up the inside. Really putting the pressure and on look at that. Crown and by, in the 450 of Anaheim. Yeah. Here Webb is, and all them just pushed a little wide. See, here it is. Look. Yep. Yeah, that's and so it, weird. Like, Tomac. he did it. It was, like, that one wasn't bad, but maybe I'm thinking of the wrong one. But there was another start where he was more buried than that, and he just snuck on. And then Tomac, well, like I said, had that one. Yeah, I feel like that was still bad for Tomac. Right here, look at Pulling Tomac. Up. Yeah. You think he's going to have a rip and star and then Barsha? Oh, never mind. Now you're, what, seventh? Yep. And then Barsha right here cuts underneath them. Now you're eighth. Race is over at that point. Bad but news. anyway, yeah, Kenny's a good pick for a minimum podium, maybe another race win. I think he's yeah. due it. If Kenny holds shots or gets up there up front um, and Jets... That's that's the thing though. Is for you don't any, know if he straight up beats him, huh? No, for it any, could be anybody a to win, thing. they've got to start in front of Jet, uh -huh. and they got Jet's got to be at least four people back after lap one. Yep, at minimum, it's a lot. To, that's a big ask. It is. It's a big ask. It could happen. It could. Looking good for Kenny. Um, AP. Let's talk about him. I have no idea what to do with this man. Also, he's really fallen off. So he just finished six, but before that, you go back five races. It was 10, 3, 18, 8, 6. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do yeah. with him right now. I'm, I'm in the same boat, but I am putting him in my top five, and here's why. So he seems like he's decent in soft or wet conditions. He's got a good attitude about it, which seems like he did. He did win factor. San Diego, muddy, uh -huh. slick. But I, I feel like the stats right now don't really back him up for my top five. It's just how he's riding this season, and how he's ridden in certain conditions well, for me are, are why I want to put him I'm in the of top the five. opinion that you're only as good as your last race. And I, if you look at the struggle bus, he's only had one top five in his last five finishes. He started the year with four in a row. Yeah. Some, something's right. off with the AP. He went from having great starts to now it's just not looking good. So I don't know. He, he loves Seattle on the 250. His only race there on a 457. So I don't know. And then, like, Jason Anderson, yeah, he just got fourth. But you put him in just a standard main event right now. Like I said, I, different. I've watched him on the track, and he's getting passed by guys. He's not moving forward. And uh, he's kind of one of those, like, kind of finishes where he's starting. Yeah. Like, if Ando starts fifth, I feel like he's probably going to finish fifth. But if he Well, I feel like he worked back a little bit. Uh yeah, I worked back a little bit in race one, and then yeah. uh, AP almost passed him at the end. Anyway, I don't think we've talked about Eli Tomac yet and showed his stats, have we? Oh, did we skip Tomac? We skipped right oh, on oh, over. My him. bad. Sorry. But, oh, it's because we went to Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, put Tomac up there real quick. So, a lot's been said about him. Um, I personally am super happy he's still racing, uh, regardless <laughs> of the results, but he's hot and cold. It's like either put him in your podium or put Put him in the top 10 if there's a wild card. So Because it's like he's either second place or he's top 10. Five of his 10 finishes this year, he's finished seventh or worse. And then he has a fourth, 
and four seconds. So he's either going to win or be on the podium, uh-huh. or he's going to be a terrible race, and he's going to be outside the top five. That's basically Tomac's trend this year. And, and I feel like it, it, uh, qualifying isn't a direct correlation with that either. No, because he's qualified well every round, yeah. and he looks spunky in qualifying. Uh-huh. That's what drives me nuts. I'm like, I watch him qualify. I'm like, dude, Tomac looks feisty. He looks good. And then it just falls apart. I will say, though, it was like watching the start in qualifying. Um he was back there, and I was like, man, maybe I should take him out of my top five. And I should have done it. So maybe and maybe that's an indicator. So you watch, okay. He, he might be just a start guy. Yeah. I, well, his best start in the last four gate drops is an eighth. Mm-hmm. So my, here's a question is, if Tomac hole shots this weekend, can he win? I think so. Go. Can a hole shotting Tomac? Like last year, Sexton had him beat by several seconds, so Sexton literally tucked the front on the straightaway. Yeah, tuck that front <laughs> in, so, son. That's the thing, man. I, I don't know. Tomac was not the fastest guy last year. He's not the fastest guy this year. In fact, I'd argue he's probably third or fourth best right now. So even if Tomac holds shots in Seattle, I don't even think he. It's I don't even think it would be Jet that would beat him. I think Kenny or Sexton are a little bit better than Tomac right now in that regard. So I just, yeah, that's yeah. I don't know. So I'd I'd put Tomac honestly like fourth, fifth. If you're gonna put him in your top five, I wouldn't. Probably wouldn't put him on the box. I just think Sexton's getting better. Kenny's got all the momentum. So I'm not super stoked on putting Tomac on the podium right now. For those reasons, I'm out. You're out on Tomac? I'm out. Okay. When was the last time we talked about just like Tomac out of your top five? or Does he win a race? I, I, I don't know if we've ever said that. I think he wins a race. If he's going to win one, it's going to be, I think, the later stages when Jet's just on like full cruise. Uh-huh. Or maybe he's wrapped up the title. I don't know. And... I'm not going to say baby yeah. gift, but... Yeah, no disrespect to him at all either. Like, Well, of course not. I think he's one of these days he's going to come out swinging, take the W. I don't think it's going to be this weekend, though. Damn, dog. That's not good. It's not good. Yep. Uh, fly Racing Wild Card Watch. Yeah. What do we got? Ooh, so 12th, 12th place. Ooh. First, we probably better talk about AC. Yeah. So season average finish so far is 13 per gate drop. Mm, pretty close right there. Yeah. His uh, last three races. Yeah, it doesn't matter where he starts. So starting <laughs> fifth. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, did you see him on social media? His Instagram post? What did he say? Okay, this is how you know when like your season's just not going very good. I don't know which race it was. At AC crashed. Had a pretty good tumble. Came uh-huh. out of a corner, tried to like d- jump on. Rear end just completely broke loose, and he goes flipping over the bars. He gets up, middle of the race, gives a safe sign to the crowd. <laughs> like, gets up show. and that gives is. the safe sign. That is and awesome. Then, and then just walks back to his motorcycle. What a cool guy. <laughs> That's when you know he's just like, it's not, going, it's, it's not looking good for AC. Anyway, I love the guy. Yep. Yeah, so season average, 13 per gate drop. And doesn't matter where he starts. He started fifth in Birmingham, and he finished 12th. Yep. So he's always right there. Okay? Kyle Chiz. Is Chiz going to Chiz all the way up to 12th, though? He could. That's a, that's a pretty big statement for Kyle Chisholm. Yeah. 12, 13, 14 for 13th overall last weekend. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good. He's right yeah. there. Sounds like it's going to be similar conditions. He's I mean, finished within two eight. spots of 12th overall in five of the last six races. So he's 14th to 10th. He hasn't, he hasn't better, been 10th, so but he's always right there. Yeah. But who'd you put your money on between? Oh, sorry. I was, I was looking at McElrath just now. Uh, <laughs> finished 13th overall in two of the last three races. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but what about McElrath, though? McElrath. Man, well, this is I a think, tough I, wild. He's your pick for 12th, this, right? This might be the hardest wild card of the year just because stats-wise, so many of these dudes make sense. Yeah, because yeah. McElrath, um, 11th last weekend, 12-13. Or sorry, 12, 14, 15, those last three races. Season average finish per gate drop, 13.93. Um, but yeah, it seems, it seems like he's been right around a 12th place guy recently. Well, you look at that first race, he's kind of like AC, where in that first race last weekend, he started third or fourth after lap one, and he just works his way back into his, his happy place. Yep. So... Doesn't matter if he starts in twelfth or starts in second, he's probably going to finish around there. So yeah. And, so and what's up? No, go ahead. No, I just think that stat that he's finished in two spots of twelfth overall in five of the last six races, he's 
But him, AC, and Chiz are right in that window, man. So I'm going Colt Nichols. You okay? Crazy stuff, huh? I don't so, know. So only back for a couple races, right? Yeah. But I uh, feel like he's trending upwards. 14th and 13th overall, so maybe a 12th this time. <laughs> <laughs> my, my only concern is like, yeah, he just got 14th, but that was on a triple crown where you have shorter races. Yeah. We'll maybe, see how the track. The we'll fitness. see how the track shapes up. Remember, yeah. McElrath got fourth at that mud race. Yeah. So if if it's muddy, maybe he's a better pick than that. But yep. I just I don't know if Colt has the fitness. And I watched him ride in person, man. He just didn't look very spunky. But well, if he does have the fitness, season average from last year was eleven point two five. So kind of liking that. All right, Benny Bloss broken collarbone. He's out. Don't collarbone. <laughs> which is a bummer. Yep. But that is the Fly Racing Wildcard Watch. Um, percentage pie that Eli Tomac races outdoors. Percentage pie? I really hope he does it. Doesn't? Does. I hope, I hope he well, races. everyone hopes he okay, does, fine. Chuck. Percentage that he does? I'm going to say like I, there's I, a, He's not a quitter. He doesn't have quit in him. 10% and it, 10% chance he races outdoors. I say 60. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's getting his butt kicked um, about, like, with just, everything going on right now. Yeah, he, he's just not happy about it. And, you know, maybe since he's a multi-time outdoor champion, like he's got to show some people who it is. Jason Anderson in the chat just said uh, 0% chance. 0%. Well, look, man, why would, if you are Mal or, uh, Eli Tomac, and you've just got your butt kicked by Jet, and not even just Jet. These other guys, right? Redemption. It's too much, dude. It's too much. I, I think he takes summer off. He'll be qualified into the SMX playoffs at the end of the year. I think, at best, we're going to see him for the three rounds of playoffs, cash in one last little check, and that is his uh, goodbye. Right off into the right, sunset. Right off in the sunset, race the SMX playoffs at the end of the year. Called a career. That's my prediction for Eli Tomac. I hope you're wrong. I hope I am too, <laughs> but that's my prediction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't well, know. That's what I got. You ready to lock them in? We are ready for the Acherubies. Lock them in. Okay. What do we got here? So I've got Jet Lawrence, Chase Sexton, Ken Roxon, Cooper Webb, Aaron Plessinger, and Colt Nichols. Okay. Let's I've got go. Sexton, Lawrence, like I said earlier. Look, we get it. Jets' number one pick, but I've got to take some risks here. I think Chase right now is the second best guy. Replace Coop. So I'm going to go Sexton, Jet Lawrence, Webb, Tomac for fourth. Might play around with him and Roxon. I'm yeah. only putting Tomac fourth just because I feel like he's he's had enough. He's, he's tired of getting his butt kicked and embarrassed, and I hope he comes back and redeems himself. But I think his best is fourth. I'm going to go Kenny fifth. I don't know why I put Kenny fifth. He's got all the momentum. But Kenny's kind of like hot and cold. Yeah. Where it's like he'll come out one weekend and just crush, and then the next weekend you're just like, where'd Kenny go? But well, I could be wrong. I've got, I've got a hot take here. What? So I'm torn. I almost want to put Kenny in second. Okay. I'm so torn about that. I think he's going to do really good. He might. So, I mean, we'll see. Look at qualifying. But, yeah, I don't know. And then wild card, I think – uh, McElrath, he's a super safe bet. Yeah. But I got to make even more points up on you. Yeah. Stretch the gap. So some people are asking this. about Justin Cooper in here. Um, Anderson. It's like, well, look, like it's just got to be uh, like Justin Cooper. If he had one top five, it's like, that's it though. It's like, we just, he's just not consistent enough. He's not, he's not a guy that I'm going to risk putting my top five um, yet. Yet. If, you know, if he was being solid, I mean, Hunter Lawrence is back, but he's not going to be in that top five. Uh, I interviewed him at the race. He's not quite 100%, so he's kind of working towards that. I don't know. Anderson could be a top five, but he could also be eighth. Anderson and Tomac are kind of like the same for me right now, where it's like yeah. you're not your you're top five material, but you're not on the podium, and but you could be eighth or ninth. I have no idea. Well, I mean, like last weekend, you see Anderson start out front, and then you start worrying about your picks. Like, oh yeah, like, oh, oh no, no, I did the like wrong Anderson thing. out front, and then you're like, oh wait, we're good, we're good. Things yeah. are shaping up like they should. Yeah. No, it's it's 
Jet, Sexton, Roxon, Webb, and then really like your your fifth final pick could be between Tomac, Anderson, Plessinger, yep. J. Coop. Like they all could be that last fifth place guy as far as like who you're going to just take a hunch on, right? But you've, we've got like these four guys that have last few races have really established themselves as like we're the top four, and then it's just a battle for that fifth spot after that. Yep. That's kind of how I feel about it. Yep, I agree. But yeah, I don't know. Interesting to see. But that's it, man. It's time for the meme event. Let's check them out. We got some good memes to show you this week. Remember, too, that the link to the Discord is down below where you can see all the memes, the stats, everything. Shout out to Cody Shock, by saw, the way. That's so impressive. I mean, what did he get? Fifth or sixth I overall? I believe it was fifth overall, and he just had that collarbone surgery. Like, man, he's, he's that a, had to hurt. Just gonna the whole time. I, I, yeah, I'd be curious to know how it felt during the night because he had surgery, and then the, the same day he said, after he went under the knife, straight to physical therapy. And I guess they say, like, it makes sense. Like, the more you sit after surgery, the more inflammation you'll get. Yeah. And it, the second you can start moving it, it'll just kind of help reduce or keep that to a a, a uh, minimum. Yeah, keep recovery time to a minimum. But I saw the x-rays, man. It was, like, fully, fully broke all the way through. <laughs> if you got metal and mesh holding it together, sound good. Let's what's, work it what's out. What's crazy, <laughs> though, is that at the night at, or after that race and after Birmingham, he was at, like, the press conference, like, hanging out, just talking to people. Like, like no, yeah. no, no sling. He even had a backpack on, just kind of draped over his shoulder. I don't even know what kind of painkiller Benny Bloss broke his collarbone and was immediately in a sling and left. Like, anyway. Okay. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Deegan complaining to the Suzuki. It was actually a Rocky Mountain. It was Mountain. a Rocky Mountain tough block. Yeah, come on. Give us some credit here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are the chances, yeah. though, of like all those tough blocks he clipped ours? I love it. I love it. Bad news. It, yeah, the the sad thing is, like, Hayden, love the guy. But what? he's got taken out so many times this year, and then if somebody else doesn't take him out, he's going to take himself <laughs> out. Like, it's just, Damn, maybe it's That's just fate. Good. That's how it's supposed to go for I him. I don't know. I was pissed, though, because I wanted to see, in that last one, I wanted to see a gnarly battle between McAdoo and Deegan. Yeah. Like, I wanted that bad. Yep. Would have been cool. Vial's crushing, man. Vial's, yeah. like, established himself as, like, I mean, he wanted one of those. He's he's in this thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. What do we got next? Okay. I'm not going to repeat that, but. Hallelujah. Yep. Um, what What's with. Okay, if if there was a record for longest podium interview, McAdoo won it. Yeah, I I thought they were going to start playing the music, the, the queuing music, set to the walk record him off the stage, you know. But yeah, I mean, great, inter interesting, you know, grateful yeah. guy. The funny but, thing is, though, is like what people don't realize and see is behind the scenes. You have the producers and NBC, and they're on a tight, tight like schedule, right? And dude, I guarantee you, they were just ripping hair out. Dude, trying to get McAdoo to wrap that thing up. He probably made a bet with his friends and was like, <laughs> hey, let's see how long you can make your podium speech before they pull the mic. I don't. I hope it doesn't become that. <laughs> yeah, Zach Attack Maniac, Anstey might have the record. They asked me to do an interview with Anstey, um, I think, at Detroit. Uh -huh. And they were like, hey, Chase, try to keep it to a minute and a half. <laughs> and I just, I just looked at uh, Sam, the producer girl. I just looked at her. I was like, you know who I'm interviewing, right? And it, yeah, it ended up being like three and a half minutes. Like there's nothing I could do. You know what always works? What? That's all for now. <laughs> <laughs> just pull the mic. I have to just, go. I just have to pull go. the mic and so that's all for now. <laughs> all, all I know is like I'm pretty embarrassed, but when Jet Lawrence was fastest qualifier, I interviewed him on the podium and I said, I've got the 96 of, of Jet Lawrence. Ooh. Yee. Jet was probably just like, what a freaking loser. Just yep. call me the wrong number. Yeah. Hey, it happens, dude. It Humble happens. him. Humbling pie. Yep. What else we got? That's better. <laughs> yeah. At least get the right logo on there. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Seth about that, actually. I saw Hammaker um, talk to him. I said, hey, off the record, what did Deegan say to you when he came over to your tent? He's like, honestly, dude, like, he started coming over, and I immediately just walked off. I didn't even say anything. Good on him. And, and, and Deegan hadn't really said much at that point. I think Deegan was just come over to, like, talk and... But what? Welcome to the danger you gotta, zone. I, I like that as a writer just because you got to keep that mental weirdness out of but the whole what, mix. What was Deegan going to say? You're so mean. What, what the heck, dude? 
why'd you do that? Like, and Seth is like, yeah, Nothing that's, you're done. right. Yeah. That's, that's what I meant to do. I meant to take myself out of the race. Like, yeah. Well, partially it's like, you got to take responsibility. I think Deegan is doing a better job at that. Like obviously yeah. taking responsibility for hitting the tough block, but take responsibility. Hey, if you're going to cut hard left, there's a chance somebody could run into you. So just know. Oh, I agree. And what, what's up with like the big 180? It's like, welcome to the danger zone. And I look. Welcome to the danger zone, baby. And then like, welcome to the danger zone, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then two weeks later, it's like complete shift. And he, you know, like I could care less. You know, it's like he's, it's like I, uh, I, I, he's thanking God. If, and he's if like, you're going to act tough. You got to be tough. To be well, I don't know. It was just weird. Cause like his whole podium speech was like a complete flip round where he's like, it's almost as like, look, I've taken a step back. I've realized like, it, um, uh, I, I ride dirt bikes for a living. Like this is just all fun. So uh, clearly, that, he that's had, a good thing, though. What's that? That's a good thing. Yeah, I don't know. Maturing. Um, yeah, but I was like, hey, but it, but also, if you're gonna be the danger boy and the and be in the danger zone and have this mentality, don't don't uh, don't shift it too much. Don't try and go from this from this to this. Yeah, because then I feel like people and fans are gonna be like, hey, dude. Which one are you? Are yeah. you this kid or are you this kid? So confusing. Hey, you know what Jay Sand said? <laughs> oh, he was like, hey, meet. Chase, <laughs> there we, we know you're famous. What? He's like, I know you're busy. <laughs> Jay Sand. I know. <laughs> we know you're busy. We'll use it next time. Oh, for Anstey? Yeah. Oh, good point. You'd be like, hey, man, I know you're a busy guy, so <laughs> that's a good point. Oh, that's what he's getting at. Okay. There Look, we an- go. another danger boy. Uh, Flip off here, dude. What did we do? All, oh, we, did the, was, all we did was pay to sponsor the series. Yeah. Don't, don't be mad at us. Yeah. A don't jerk. Be, the, that, the tough block's for safety here. Tough block's there to help you, dude. Did You just got a little too close to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know, man, but that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see Cade after <laughs> when and him, horn. Cade just puts an arm up like, sorry. Like, I I would wonder what would happen or what's going through Cade's mind knowing like, dude, I just took out homie in second place in the points. Like, I just cleaned him out in the whoop section. Yep. I wonder if you'd be riding the rest of that whole main event just thinking like, what's going to happen? Like, is he going to come talk to me? I'm never going to hear the end of this. Like, you've got to be thinking that. Because he didn't know who it was at first, right? Jet goes right. past, and then all of a sudden, like, you tag a rider, and you look over, and you're just like, damn, dog, that's not good. Damn, dog, that's not good. Yeah, well, I don't know. Not much you can do. Well, it's like, obviously, he knew the leaders were coming up, so he was trying to stay out of the way. But He, he cross rutted like. Yeah, the, it wasn't like he was trying to move over, right? It was no, just, no, he just. just happened. Well, it was in a rhythm lane. Excuse me, it wasn't the ruts. He, he cross rutted and just jumped into Cooper Webb. Nothing he could have done about it. Um, but it's where the cookie crumbles. It is, but it's got to be a crappy cookie that Cooper Webb had to eat because you're just like, oh boy. So why not just keep blasting people? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Well, look, everybody, there it is. That's the meme event. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Remember, we're doing the 20 tickets of Foxborough. So make sure after this video is posted, go there and yeah, Clayson gets free dunks for life. Mm, <laughs> maybe. Jet's going to win this thing already. Collusion. Collusion. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Anyway. But remember, go uh, post after this video is posted. If you can get, if you can make it to Foxborough, we'll uh, pick some lucky winners for that. Go to the Discord. The link to that is down below as well. Remember, go to rmfancysx.com. First time playing. Even if you sign up today, whenever you're watching this, you have up until the night show begins to put in your picks and you're always eligible for a weekly prize, even though you're out of it at this point for grand. And RM Cash. And RM Cash, Fantasy yeah. Cash. Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing people talking about it, using it. So, yeah, make sure to go do that. You can link your accounts. It's free money. Free so the, money. The people that got 117 points won weekly prizes and won a whole bunch of Fantasy Cash to go spend on the website. Beautiful. Does, does it get better than that? It doesn't. I don't think it does. And it makes the races way more fun. Yes, I agree. So... Well, there you have it. But, uh, yeah, good luck on your picks. Post your picks down below. Um, somebody asked if I was announcing this last weekend. I was. And, uh, but, yeah, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. We had a blast. And uh, best of luck good in luck. Seattle. See ya.